So hello everyone. Welcome to this new session. So in this session we are going to discuss with the uh, one more important concepts of the third module of a control system that is introduction to controllers. Okay. So basically there are uh, three main kinds of controllers which we need we need to be studying in this syllabus. Okay. That th they uh, those are PI, PD, and PID controllers. So let's first start with the basics of this introduction to controllers. So now what are these controllers? So the concept of a control system is to sense deviation of the output from the desired value and correct it till the desired output is achieved. Okay. Till we get the desired output, uh, this, these controllers uh, do the task of controlling the output in such a way that the output which we are getting is in a steady manner with a, uh, a less amount of error in possible due to the feedback. Okay. So the feedback allows us to compare the actual output with its desired value to generate the error. So in this case, we can see that the feedback is very very important in case of controllers okay so these it allows the error gen generation to be constant in nature okay and it provides us a very swift error and we can uh, uh, even control those kind of errors so we can uh, control those errors so this was all about the introduction to controllers so rest of the introduction you can read it here you can pause the video and you can refer this introduction if you want so now without any further due let's get to the classification of uh, industrial controllers okay so there are these many types of controllers which we are going to study but in mainly which we are going to study is the highlighted part see here the proportional controllers integral controllers proportional plus integral controllers or we can say that those are the pi controllers and proportional plus integral plus derivative controllers they are pid controllers okay so these are the controllers which are very important and uh, we need to be studying so these are the classifications of industrial controllers here so now let's get to the two position or on off controllers okay so what are these on off controllers the most elementary controller mode is the two position on off controller mode it is the simplest and the cheapest the most general form can be given by uh, p is equal to 0 or we can say that probability is equal to 0 and ep is equal to less 0 this is the error po error portion this is called as ep error portion when uh, p is equal to 100 the error portion is always greater than 0 for example an on off switch okay an on off switch in order to turn on the fan we use the so if we on the switch the uh, fan would turn on right and in the similar way if we off the switch the fan would turn off so there is no chance of any error so that's why this is the best example for an on off controller okay you can give an example of a fan uh, tube light a bulb or anything these and all are the uh, components which are controlled by the switch or we can say that those are on off controllers okay yeah so you can see this theory part again if you want you can refer it okay so the next type is the proportional controllers so in this control mode the output or the of the controller is simple proportional to the error e of t the relation between the error e of t and the controller output p is determined by constant called as proportional gain constant which is denoted as kp okay this kp is the proportional gain constant here okay so the output of the controller is a linear function of the error e of t okay thus each value of the error has a unique value of the controller output so we can say that the error provided here or the error which we get here has a unique value of the controller output so the error which we are getting in this proportional controllers okay has a unique value of the controller output we can see that this is the controller output here p of s okay uh, means uh, whatever error we get right uh, that uh, output depends on that particular error so that's why it has a unique value of the controller output so the range of the error which covers from uh, 0 percent to 100 percent of the controller output is called as the proportional band okay so the which whatever the error, error generated here in this proportional controller is called as the proportional band okay so the basic relationship between the output of the controller and error signal is given by uh, p of t is equal to kp into e of t so this is the relationship between the output of the controller and the error of the controller which is proportional to an uh, a proportionality uh, gain constant we can see that which is direct that is p of t is directly proportional to e of t or p of t is equal to kp into e of t where this kp is the proportional gain constant so now taking Laplace transform on both sides, what we will be getting P of S is equal to KP into E of S. Okay. So this is the simple block here. So we can see that there is a summing point along with that. There is a gain, proportional gain constant here, KP and this is the error and this is the provided output. Okay. Yeah. So there are more things about proportional controllers here. 
that is there exists a linear function between uh, controller output and the error for a zero error the controller output is should not be zero otherwise the process will come to an halt okay that is the controller output and the error for a zero error or controller output it should not be equal to zero hence there exists some controller of p naught for the zero error hence mathematically the proportional control mode is expressed as p of, p of t is equal to kp into e of t plus p naught okay where p naught refers to the controller output with zero error okay Whenever this P0 comes, we should be uh, uh, saying that that uh, P0 is equal to the zero error. So this is uh, the graph for that. So here we can see that this is the timeline and this is the slope. And here this is the error provided. But here in this case, the error is uh, zero error. So that's why uh, the P0 is getting applied here. Yeah. So this is all about the proportional controllers. So the next next type of controllers are the integral controllers or the I controllers. So in the proportional control mode, error reduces but cannot go to zero. It finally produces an offset error. It, it cannot adapt with the changing in load conditions. To avoid this, another control mode is often used to the control system, which is basically in the history of errors. This mode is called as the integral mode of controllers. Okay, or we can say that it is also called as reset action controller. Okay, that is whenever in a controller, if uh, this, if we have a sudden error occurred. Okay. In order to control that, we use these kind of controllers called as a integral controllers or a reset action controller. So, in order to uh, give the desired output, okay, the error uh, which we get here, in order to avoid that, or in order to restart our system, we can use these kind of controllers called as integral controllers. Okay, in such a controller, the value of controller output P of t is changed at the rate which is proportioned. So the actuating error signal E of t, mathematically it is expressed as dP of t by d of t is equal to ki into E of t. So this is the expression here. Okay, so keep this in mind where this ki refers to the constant relating error and ra rate. Okay, constant relating error. Okay, what was kp? Proportionality gain. So this is the constant relating error. So by taking Laplace transform, you would be getting this term here. So this is the further part that is the constant ki is also called as the integral constant. So this is called as integral constant here ki. Also we can say that this is the relating error constant or an integral constant. So the integrating above equation the actual controller output at any time t can be obtained as p of t is equal to ki uh, integral from limit uh, 0 to t e of t dt plus this is the proportionality error gained here where p of 0 is the controller output when integral actions starts at uh, t is equal to 0 okay where the uh, here the value of t is 0 so we can neglect this part this is not necessary okay so this expression here is the final expression here yeah so this is the final expression for these integral controllers so now the next type of controllers are the derivative controllers so the, this controller produces and control action that is proportional to the rate at which the error is changing at d e of t by dt that is change of error is occurring with respect to time okay you can see this d e of t by dt okay so the mathematical equation for the mode is given as for derivative controllers the mathematical equation is p of t which is the proportional proportionality okay or the probability of error occurring is equal to k d into t e of t by dt so now what is this k d here so this k d refers to the derivative gain constant okay this k d is called as the derivative gain constant and this is the expression for the derivative controllers okay yeah so when we take the laplace transform on both sides we would be getting p of s is equal to kd and this uh, derivative d by dt is uh, uh, replaced as s right we know that d by dt when we take the laplace transform uh, it is replaced by s and integral uh, when we take the integration it is replaced by 1 by s okay so this is the controller output side you can see here and this is one simple block for uh, derivative controllers so this was all about the functioning of derivative controllers okay uh, these and all uh, controllers are used in the second order control system okay these are not used in the first order control system mostly all the second order control system use these kind of controllers that uh, these are uh, these are uh, integral controllers derivative controllers pi pd and pid controllers okay these all are comes under second order control system only okay so the next type of contro uh, controllers are proportional plus integral controllers okay these are also called as pi controllers so this is a composite control mode obtained by combining the proportional mode and the integral mode okay 
it is combined by both the proportional and the integral mode. So the mathematical expression for such a comp composite control is referred as P of T is equal to KP into E of T plus KP into KI into integral of the uh, 0 to T E of T dt plus E0. Okay, so this is the expression. It is just the summation of both the proportional as well as integral control. That's it. Okay. So now taking the Laplace transform, the simplified equation, which is not uh, visible here. So I'm going to read it out. That is Kp into 1 plus uh, K, uh, Ks divided by uh, S into E of S. Okay. Yeah. So this is one simple block. Okay. You can uh, take this uh, theory down. So the next type of controller is uh, proportional plus derivative controllers, okay? Yeah. So the series combination of proportional and derivative control modes gives proportional plus derivative control modes. The mathematical expression for PD composite control is given as P of T is equal to KP into E of, uh, e of T plus KP into KD into D E of T by DT plus P0. Okay, now taking the Laplace transform, we are going to get this uh, term here. Okay, then this is the simple block here. Then the addition of a derivative mode to a proportional controller modifies its uh, response to outputs, okay? Then a PD controller provides an element to the response which is largest when the rate of change of error is greatest and uh, diminishes as it becomes smaller. So this PD controller, we can also say that uh, it elements to the response which is largest when the rate of change of error is greatest, okay? Whenever the error... Uh, change or the DE of T by DT, uh, the rate of change of error is greatest, okay? The PD controller provides an element to the response, that is it diminishes as it, as it becomes smaller. So whenever there is a large amount of error, the PD controller provides, uh, the PD controller uh, controlling strength would be becoming smaller, okay? So this is the thing. Then the derivative mode is never used alone because it is not capable of maintaining a controlled signal, okay? So in this case, when uh, the derivative mode is never used alone, so that's why it is, it is proportional plus derivative, these two work together uh, in us in the same time whenever the error is occurred. It is always with the proportional mode and often additionally used in the other controllers, okay? Okay, so now let's see the other kind of controller that is proportional plus integral plus derivative controllers. So in this, we are making use of proportional, integral and derivative controllers at the same time, okay? So this is the same thing, the composite controller including the combination of all these three controllers, okay? It is very much complex to design but very powerful in action. So this is the most powerful controller where the error occurred, we can control it in a swift amount of time, okay? In a very small amount of time, we can control the error occurred, okay? And we can purify the signal and we can purify the system as well. So mathematically, such a control mode can be expressed as, this is the expression here, P of T plus uh, is equal to KP into E of T plus KP into KI into uh, integral from 0 to T E of T dt plus KP into KD into derivative of uh, a rate of change of uh, error plus P0. So this is the equation. And uh, while taking the Laplace transform, you would be getting this final equation here. You can refer it down. And this is the simple block of the PID controllers, okay? So these are some more theory advantages and all. Uh, if you want, you can uh, read this down here. So this is not so important. If you want, you can read this. I've provided you. So this was all about the theory part about all these controllers. Okay. So now let's get to one simple program related to the these uh, PI and PD controllers. Okay. Yeah. So this is one simple program here. You can see here of uh, PI and PD controllers. Okay. So here let's see here uh, in this program first right they aim to analyze and implement the PI and PD controllers using inbuilt MATLAB okay. So in this case we need to be using the software called as MATLAB okay. It is available in your uh, uh, Google or uh, you can download it if you want MATLAB 2007 all the programs and all we would be doing in that only in order to get this kind of outputs here okay. So here, this is the first program here. You can see this is a simple program. So first take a, a simple transfer function, okay? Which uh, have, have having both numerator and denominator and write them in form of uh, NUM is equal to one and DEN is equal to one, three, one that you might be knowing that is writing the coefficients and all. Then uh, declare a variable called as G with the opcode of TF, which uh, de uh, defines as the transfer function of numerator as well as denominator. It would be giving if it would be solving this and it would be giving you an expression. Then this H represents the feedback. Okay, that feedback path. Okay. Then it 
that we, this is the unity feedback so that's why it is given as one so m is equal to feedback of g comma h that is these both are the feedback right so if we want to convert it into a single block this command you will be using then step of m then hold on then kp ki kd i've told you right the kp is the proportionality gain ki is the error constant and kd is the a derivative constant so you we need to be giving different different values for this okay if you the program remains the same if you change the values these three values you will be getting uh, desired outputs uh, as a uh, uh, different different waveforms with the different different uh, timelines that is a uh, peak time rise time settling time and all okay then uh, declare one uh, one more variable capital letter g then pid that is a uh, proportional plus integral plus derivative controllers pid then uh, of kp comma ki comma kd then uh, mc is equal to feedback of g star g comma h that is multiplication of the transfer function along with the required output of uh, pid controllers then uh, we have declared it using the variable mc it is the uh, controllers uh, then uh, step of mc then we will be getting the desired output for that as well then grid on this is optional okay if you don't provide this the, the grid you can see this grid lines here right the horizontal and vertical lines that won't be occurring okay if you put this a command grid on these lines would be occurring here and this is the output generated here you can see okay so this is the output generated for the so this is the output generated for the first program which i have told here where the values of kp ki kd are 2480 when we set the value of uh, kp as 24 ki as 8 and kd as 0 so this is the response which you are getting here okay you can see the response here this is the response okay where you can see we are getting two curves here and uh, this is the uh, peak time okay it's approximately around uh, we can see the time here it's approximately around 0.8 seconds okay this is the rise time uh, rise time is approximately around 0.3 seconds and this is the settling time that is 0 0.98 seconds okay yeah so, uh, yeah, so this is 6.98 seconds okay so in this way we need to be uh, uh, writing a program for pi and pd controllers okay so this question was there in the model question paper so that's why i have uh, made you uh, see this program okay so that's all for this session so hope you like this session of PI, PD controllers and all. So please refer these videos and refer whatever I have uh, displayed in the screen and make a note of it because uh, the theory questions might be uh, asked in the exams. Okay. So that's why please uh, like, share, subscribe and uh, refer our playlists. Okay. So that's all. Thank you.